Welcome back to Smoke Barbecue Source. Today I'm going to do the review on the Weber Smokefire Stealth Edition. Now some of you probably know that the first edition of the Smokefire had a few issues. Now I'm here to tell you that I've had pretty dang good luck running this Stealth Edition. Now there's a few things that I would like to see them change in maybe the fourth edition, but for right now, this pit doing pretty good. The assembly on the Weber Stealth was pretty smooth for my boys. They did say that you're going to want to have two people to do it because when you have to pick it up on the one end, it's a heavy pit. I think it weighs right around 200 pounds. But one thing that you really want to make sure that you're paying attention to is when you put that igniter inside that fire pot. Anything around that fire pot, double check your manual or your instructions and make sure you have that on on right. Pay close attention to that pellet shoot. Make sure you have that aligned right too. I'll say it again. Make sure that anything that you're putting together around that fire pot is correct. Even the heat deflector. That goes on a certain way too. If you have any issues, double check that you have that put together right. After the boys got it all put together, I went right into the burn off or seasoning up the pit. This again was super simple. You just run it at 400 degrees for 45 minutes. I also used a little bit of cooking spray and sprayed down that inside just to help season it up a little bit quicker. Now during the burn off, the first thing that I noticed right away that this pit likes to smoke. And the same thing goes with every single cook that I've done on this pit since the initial startup. Now some of you might have seen that first initial cook where I did a brisket on this pit and that thing turned out great. But I've been cooking on this for about a month and a few of the cooks that I actually filmed, I did some St. Louis ribs, some brats, grilled up some shrimp, and even did some pizza. And all of it turned out fantastic. I'm gonna tell you, those shrimp were some of the best shrimp that I've ever grilled before in my life. I ran this pit seven times before I actually cleaned it up because I was testing to see if I would get any buildup around them grease ports. I didn't. Now I had a little bit on the left hand side, but I did two low and slows directly above that port. But it never completely closed up, so I was pretty happy to see that. Now the cleanup on the Weber Stealth, it's pretty much like every single other pellet grill out there. The only thing is you have a lot more pieces because of those flavor bars that you gotta take out to get cleaned up. Now the only thing that I noticed while the boys were cleaning this pit up is when they pulled all those flavor bars out that those hangers in the back of the chamber in front got loose. So make sure that you get them seated back in tightly. If not, your flavor bars will probably be on an angle or something like that. So just check that before you go ahead and put everything back together. It's time to do a walk around review on the Weber Stealth. First thing that you're gonna notice that this new paint job is awesome. Yes, it's still enamel coated. Now the Stealth, it only comes in the 36 inch model. So for all of you that like to entertain or have a big family to feed, this pit should be able to get the job done. We have 1,008 square inches of cooking space in this pit. Our bottom grates are 17 and a half by 36 inches. Our top grate is seven and a half by 36. I wish it was 10 inches wide because that could give me a little bit more room to get a little bit more product in this pit. You can see right here, if it just went out a couple more inches, there's still plenty of room to be able to close up that lid. And you can also get the Weber crafted grillware and use in this pit too. So if you wanted to get a wok or like a pizza stone, you have a rack that's gonna hold it. And from what I've learned by running this pit, the right hand side is the hotter spot. So that's a great location for that grate. Another upgrade on the smoke fire is it now comes with a light on the stealth. Obviously, if you want it nice and bright and white, you're gonna have to clean up that cover every once in a while because it's gonna start to develop a little bit of an amber color. If you don't have a light outside on your deck, having that light in that pit, that helps you a lot so you can see things. You don't have to hold like a flashlight with your chin. Just saying. Now the controller, it is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So just download the app and set it up and you can see the app is working. Now I know some of the older models had some issues with the app working correctly or even the pit connecting to Wi-Fi. I can't say that. 
Mine's ran perfect. Now you can set a timer on the controller itself, but you can also just simply do it in the app. Now the Weber Stealth comes with two meat probes, but the controller has four probe ports. So if you want, you can go online and pick up two more probes. Like most pits that are coming out these days, the Stealth does have a smoke boost option. Now I did use it when I was smoking those St. Louis ribs, but to be honest, this pit smokes pretty heavy. So I didn't really see a big difference when I had that smoke boost set. But with that being said, this pit does leak a lot of smoke around the lid. It's not the end of the world because you have those vents on the back that's pushing out the smoke anyways. But it would be nice if that lid closed tight. One thing I want to point out is they do send you this little scraper for cleaning out those grease holes inside the chamber. I haven't used mine yet, but I haven't had to. But it's cool to have this little tool in case you get some little clogs. Now we only have one shelf and it does have two tool hooks. You can, for an extra charge, get a front folding shelf and also a side folding shelf. Another upgrade that they did to the Stealth is with the 20 pound hopper. This chute is all one piece now, all the way down to the auger. We have the hopper release and they also re-engineered this finger guard along with repositioning the auger and the low fuel sensor. Now during that brisket cook I checked the hopper at about seven hours in and I did have a little bit of piling or log jam as I call it. I think if you run this down to about five pounds of pellets you might be in trouble. One thing about having the hopper in the back that I'm not too thrilled about is that because the way this is designed, the only way I can pour them in is right from this corner. And you gotta be very careful when you're pouring them in because they wanna bounce out. So you don't have a lot of room to fill up your hopper. You, you get too carried away, pellets will fall into here. So if this was a little wider, even if it was a bigger hopper, it'd be better in my opinion. I haven't cleaned out the ash and grease catch yet, but this is what it looks like after seven cooks. We got a little bit of crispy stuff in here because we did vacuum out that inside of that chamber and some of it fell through the holes. Having the ash and grease clean out in the bottom in that little drawer, it is a nice little feature so you don't have to have a grease bucket hanging off the end. Now these casters on this pit, they're not the biggest, but the pit moves around fairly easily. Now two casters, you can go ahead and lock. And for every pit that I get that has the 360 degree rotation on the casters, I always put the ones that lock in the front. Even if the instructions tell me otherwise, I wanna be able to lock the two in the front and not have to worry about going around the back. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what's my opinion on the Weber Smokefire Stealth Edition. Well, it's positive. When I was using it as a smoker, it certainly had a good smoke flavor. The brisket and the ribs that I smoked, both of them turned out juicy and tender. They might have been a little bit dry, and I don't know really how to explain that 100%, but I think it would certainly help when you're cooking in this pit to have a water pan in. Without having a drip pan in there, I think there's a lot more airflow. That's the only thing that I really noticed, that the outside of that bark seemed a little drier than the norm. And I did both of those cooks like I normally do. I typically pan up my briskets with some braising liquid and I run a no wrap rip. But what I was really impressed with is how this pit can grill. This pit will get up to 600 degrees. So when I grilled up those brats, knowing that the right hand side was a little hotter, I just rotated them from right to left. And they all were finished at about the same time. But when I grilled up those red shrimp, I'm gonna tell you, that was fun. I actually had some flare up off a pellet grill. Because there's no drip pan, there was straight heat coming up there and kissing those little shrimps and leaving a little extra flavor on them. And the bonus was that this pit had no problems whatsoever cooking up some pizza. Bottom got nice and crispy and the top was all cooked. Now one thing that I really wish that was different on this pit is that it had a grommet on the side to be able to run my probes through. Maybe they could actually have an easier 
access because their probe wires aren't the longest and it's pretty hard if you're going to get a probe all the way to the other end of this pit. The second thing, it's the hopper. I wish it was a little wider in the back and when you open up the lid, pellets wouldn't fall in between it and wouldn't fall in between the chamber. You got a big 40 pound bag of pellets, it gets kind of tricky sometimes. The last thing that I wish was different is that that top rack was a little wider. It'd just be easier to put a brisket up there and then put the pan underneath it. One really cool thing that Weber does offer on this pit is a 100 day return policy. Now they have a standard five year limited warranty and then like a three year on electrical parts and three years like on grates. But just knowing that you have 100 days to return it, I think you can roll the dice on this. Who is this pit kind of built for? It's built for the people that always ask me, hey, I do a lot of grilling, but I kind of want to get into smoking. What's your preferred pellet grill? I would highly suggest the Stealth because it can grill like crazy and it can smoke. And it doesn't take that long to preheat this pit. So if you're thinking about coming from the gas LP, type of cooking and have a little bit of wood flavor, but still be able to do the majority of the grilling that you do, Stealth's your answer. If you've got any questions or just want to tell us about your experience with the Stealth, leave it in the comments below. Plus, if you're looking for more information on the Weber Smoke Fire Stealth Edition, there'll be some links that you can click on that'll send you over to Smoke Barbecue Source that'll give you some pricing and a more in-depth review on the Weber Stealth. I appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next video.